podcast. This is my spring edition of the podcast and it's so nice to just get an hour away. I sneaked off to the greenhouse to record this just to chat about my knits and yeah it's really nice to be back in this space so um yeah so what's the crack? <laughs> It's been a while. Um, I have quite a few, well, quite a few. I have like three things to show you, which is not very many, but that is the reality of life with the baby. <laughs> and also still working. So life is busy and tiring, uh, but good. So um, I don't do loads of knitting now. I maybe do like, if I'm lucky, I do like an hour in the evening or something without falling asleep. <laughs> so I don't have piles and piles of stuff, but I do have some quite interesting stuff to show you. Um, I hope the sound's okay in here. It's not too windy today. Um, it's a little bit windy, you can see the palm tree moving. But hopefully the sound's okay in here. So, last time I podcast, um, I had a lot of stuff, but um, I wasn't able to show you all of it because um, I couldn't remember what half of it was and those first months after having a baby your head is just like you can't remember anything your memory is so bad it's still bad but it's not as bad as it was then so I have one one finished object uh, two works in progress, one of which you've seen before and I haven't actually made that much progress on. <laughs> and I have some dream knitting, I've done some swatches, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to cast on next. And I have some yarn that's coming in the next update that I'll show you as well. One of um, which you might have seen on my Instagram, it's a, it's a really nice colour yarn that I dyed with some weeds, so I'll show you that later. But first of all, I'll start with, well, maybe I should say what I'm wearing. This is the Rufus Shawl by Vanessa Pelisa. It was part of my advent calendar in 2020. 20? Did I do that? 2020? If you can see. It's uh, designed in my natural sock and um, it's got these cool tassels. And um, it's a good project for mini skeins. So um, Vanessa actually knitted this and very kindly sent it to me um, as a present after she had released the pattern. And um, it's really nice for this time of year. Um, and I think she was gonna knit one for herself then after that. So, um, yeah, so this is not in the colours that I did the advent. These are just some random minis that I had that I sent her when she was designing it. So it doesn't really correspond to <laughs> what the advent calendar looked like in 2020. But it's a nice and lightweight, so it's good for this time of year. Like, like I could have came out here just wearing short sleeves, but it's nice and cosy with the nice um, shawl on. So right, on to the first project. Um, this is in now uh, my Alex Collins bag. This is a little collaboration I did with Alex Collins. I do them just randomly, but she designed, she refreshed my logo in with her style and screen printed it on the back of these sweater sacks. This is my Ever Grey sweater by The Petite Knitter. And I knitted it in Jameson's of Shetland DK. And I'm just gonna put this on to show you what it looks like because I've just finished it. Um, here we go. I haven't woven in the ends. I haven't blocked it. I've literally just finished it. So, here we go. I have actually steam blocked this top section, um, but I haven't wet blocked it yet. So, this project, I started this project 
a bag, I, I think I bought the yarn for it back last summer. Started it at the end of the summer. Um, and I only got, I think I got to about here when I had to be admitted to hospital when I was pregnant and um, life just got very complicated and I decided not to work on it anymore as it was more than my brain could handle <laughs> and um, for some reason I found this bit really difficult. I ripped it out about three or four times but it's probably just where my head was at at that point. I wasn't able to like concentrate on it properly and it's unusual because as you can see it's not like symmetrical so it's not like how you think it should be when you're knitting it so that takes a bit of um thought process and thought yeah takes a bit of concentration concentration um and i didn't have that then it went until maybe a month month and a half ago and i was really looking for something a bit more challenging to knit and my sister-in-law, who I had been sitting with when I ordered the yarn for this sweater, she was like, why don't you get that um, that nice colour work sweater um, that you were working on ages ago? I was like, oh, that's a great idea. So um, I made a mistake in this bit, but I decided not to rip out because it's like a little timeline of last year when it was, when I was pregnant. Um, yeah, I decided. Right, I'm actually just going to keep it. Um, I thought about ripping it back. Um, and then I was just decided not to, to just keep it there as a little, what's the word I'm looking for? A little memorial? No, that's not the right word. A little like keepsake of that time, which wasn't easy, but um, as part of a bigger story. So, decided to keep it in and then I started down 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 I think somewhere around here maybe it was even before that it was three strands of colour work in one row which is quite challenging um I don't do continental knitting I can't do it I tried um it makes my gauge go really weird so what I do is I put basically Two strands on one finger and then I just lay, I just pick up the third strand so that makes it very 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 slow so at one point I was maxing out on two rows a night which is completely fine and I was so pleased when I did that um, so from here to here took a really long time but I felt like I was making progress on my skills and I was doing something interesting and it's good to challenge your brain like that and not always be doing the same thing or doing something easy. Um, so I'm really proud of what I did. Um, it was quite difficult and I'm glad I tackled it. So when I got to here, obviously then it's just stocking it. So that was very easy just to whiz down this. I actually made a mistake in the cuffs and the hem, but I only realized after I knitted the hem that I made a mistake. It's supposed to be the darker color is supposed to be up here and the lighter color is supposed to be at the bottom. So I just did the same on the cuffs so that it wouldn't look weird because up here, I just assumed it would be the same as up here, but it was the opposite way. So, and something else I wanted to say about this project was, what was it? I can't remember now, but um, the colors, the colors, the colors, I actually brought out the balls of wool so that I would be able to tell you what they are because I know people always like to know. I've got quite a bit of yarn left over um, there's various different um, lengths that you can knit this sweater in. So you can do the sleeves bracelet length, which I've done and I do with pretty much all my sweaters. And the jumper, it can be um, cropped or regular length, but basically anything that I knit has to be cropped because I'm very short. So I have quite a lot of yarn left over. So this is the yarn. 
Jameson's Double Knitting and this colour is called E Sit 1051129 E E S I T. This is the natural colour. And then there's this one. This one's called Thistle Down 2378422. I'm not sure which um is the oh yeah, wait, colour and lot. I'm so stupid. <laughs> um colour 237. And this one the first the, the first one the colour was 105. And the third one the colour is Merland 195. And I am so into these colours. You probably uh, I think you can get a good representation of all the different little flecks of colour in this yarn. Um and I absolutely adored working with it. It's wool and spun um in Shetland and the colour is beautiful and it's just this is the stuff that I love knitting garments in. Anything wool and spun um just makes it so warm and light. Like I don't like I don't like a sweater that drags. Um, I know some people like drape in like a garment, but me personally, I'm not so into that. I like it to feel nice and light and easy to wear. So that's what I feel I get with this project. So overall, I would say it's a lovely project and I really, really enjoyed it. And I'll definitely knit um, another one of the petite knitters patterns and um, if you don't follow her on Instagram she has some beautiful photography so um, you could check that out if you so desire. Now I'm quite warm so I might take this off again or should I keep it on? Maybe I'll try and keep it on. <laughs> um, okay next thing is a work in progress. And it's in this beautiful basket was made by Phil Bradley, who is a basket maker in Cumbria. And I discovered him because I stayed in his Airbnb a few times I've stayed there and he has his basket making workshop right beside the Airbnb. So of course I ordered a basket. Um, this one is a frame basket. It's a really old type of basket. And I use it for my knitting often and I often use it in the garden and I would love to get another one of his baskets but he's very busy and he has a very long queue so I was lucky to get one. <laughs> so I use it all the time. So next work in progress, we're on to works in progress now, is my scattering petals Kyle by Dana Ray Mix. Here we go. It's getting quite long now, but it is not long enough. It needs to be 60 inches long before I can um, finish it. I think we're around 50 or so inches at the moment. Um, oh, I'm getting a lovely whiff of, whiff of tomato plants there. Um, so, this is a very easy knit. Um, I would say it's good if you're watching TV or watching a baby. Um, it was when I was knitting this that I also was looking for something more challenging because, um, you know, 60 inches of the same pattern is quite, quite a lot when you know, every row is the same. Well, it's not the same, but every rut, like every repeat is the same. But I really, really like it. The texture is amazing. And just, it's quite Moorish because like, you're like, oh, one more color, one more color. And usually I can do two colors in a night. So two repeats in a night. So if I calculated that out, I wouldn't like to know how many nights I've spent in this. <laughs> but um, it's a really lovely pattern and I really would recommend it. Um, it's not too taxing on your brain, which was totally where I was at when I started casting this on and when I started knitting this. So that was really perfect for when I needed it. Um, so the yarn is actually, is this when I'm gonna 
uh, tell you all about my new yarn. Um, I think I might have shown this to you in the last episode. This is the same yarn that I knitted my Ultimate Lazy Cardigan in by Albina McGoffin. You know, the brown cardigan that I made? This is the same yarn. It is, I'm gonna do the big reveal. <laughs> I don't even have a skein of it to show you. Oh, maybe I have a few kicks, I'll show you in a minute. Um, this yarn is a DK weight version of my um, hearth sock. So the construction's a little different. The hearth sock yarn is constructed with a high twist and three plies. So three threads make up the yarn. Whereas the DK weight version um, is a two ply yarn and it's a lower twist. So it is um, better for garments and it's worst at spun. So it does have more drape than say the likes of this, which is woolen spun. Um, and it's a mix of Blueface Leicester and Jacob 50-50. And the fibre was sourced in the UK and spun in the UK and naturally dyed by me in Northern Ireland. And um, yeah, so now you know, you're the first to know <laughs> so as you're watching this. And this will be released in August, just in time for the autumn. And I have been testing it out, I've knitted that cardigan obviously, and now I'm knitting this um, coil. Um, and I'm really liking it. It's a bit like my BFL Mass and Base, but it has more texture, it's a bit more sheepy. Um, it's not quite as drapey, although it does have a bit of drape. Um, it is slightly darker and I would say slightly, very slightly browner maybe. Um, than the BFL Massim and it's 240 meters per 100 grams so it's DK weight and yeah so it looks really nice all piled up like this and I'll show you some kegs of yarn all right I'll show you this in a minute a lot of swatches here too so this is the undyed So this is the same colour as the undyed horse sock, obviously. Um, I'm working on the labels for this at the moment. Um, I took the photo on my hearth sock label, so I'm going to take a different photo for the DK weight. And I'll just show you what colours I have in here. This is um, cognac. This is leftover from my Ultimate Lazy Cardigan, actually. So I'm just using it up in this. This is actually another great thing about this pattern is it's good for using up bits and pieces that you might have. And the the cool thing about the pattern is you can do um, a four ply version, you can do a DK, a DK version, or you can hold two strands together in it as well. So there's a lot of scope for if you have bits left over from stuff would be good if you had, I think it was originally designed for mini schemes or like an advent or like a countdown calendar or something. Um, and yeah, that's why it's good for bits. Um, this is, I don't know, peony maybe? Copper, looks quite similar to cognac, but it's not, big bit of fluff on it. <laughs> Um, and indigo and mustard green which is what I've which is what I'm knitting with at the moment on this current row so yeah this is this the scattering petals coil by Donna Ray Mix last work in progress is in a little Jenna Rose bag. I kind of bought this on a whim, along with some other things. One day I was probably feeling sorry for myself or something. 
Um, anyway. I think I maybe showed this in the last episode. These are my Sunday socks. I just knit on these on a Sunday. I keep them in the changing bag and if I'm out somewhere then I generally work on them and it's pretty much whenever we're around at my in-laws on a Sunday I whip these out and get going on them because someone else usually has the baby. So um, this is in my heart sock yarn in the mustard green colourway and yeah I'll show you I'll actually show you I'll see if there's difference in dye dots between the mustard green that's not too bad actually yay <laughs> um I have started on my next one and I don't know about you but I always stall when I get to the heel of a sock I think it's just because you have to think and I yeah so like I whizzed down this bit and then I'm like ah, oh, I'll just leave it until like I have time to think about the heel and then it just sits like this for ages I think I actually had this one done in the last episode so this is all that I've done since then so maybe actually not this Sunday because my in-laws are away on holidays so I'm not going to get any knitting done this Sunday <laughs> probably um but I'll get going on this soon, this little Progress Keeper by Chapel View Crafts. It was in her advent calendar actually. Um, so that is that. So I think that's all I have actually in the way of projects. I'm going to show you my dream knitting now. So. I have been thinking about casting on for a while a sweater in my hearth sock. Someone gave me the idea on Instagram. I think they were going to do it and I was like, ooh, I could definitely, I could definitely do that um, as well. And um, I thought about what this yarn might look good in and I did think potentially a rib, but I'm not sure maybe something with cables and I started swatching for a sweater I think it's by a designer called My Favourite Things and the sweater was something is in my head that's saying it's number 12 but that could be wrong a number 12 sweater anyway it was basically like a, a rib sweater um, Normally I look at the gauge on the pattern page before I buy it, a swatch, and then if the yarn works with the, you know, if I like the fabric and I like, I like that, how it looks, then I'll purchase the pattern and begin. Um, but this time I wasn't sure because it's, the pattern is in the rib I think it's in is it called the fisherman's rib or no it's not it's something else but um I wasn't exactly sure you know if it was like pearl one knit one or if it was um knit one pearl two and so on so I did some swatches just to see how the fabric looked this is still something that I could see me Megan but maybe not right away because it's quite the fabric turned out quite different from how the fabric looks in some of the pattern pages so these are different needle sizes and it makes such a big difference to how this actually looks so this is the biggest needle size I feel that this looks quite messy um, don't ask me what the needle size was and obviously if I start to do this again I'll have to redo all the swatches because I don't remember what needle size. This is a size smaller and this is the smallest size and I feel like this definitely looks the neatest so comparing the largest one to the smallest one I think this one looks a lot nicer in my opinion. I don't know what do you think of that? 
and this is the middle one. I would also prefer this slightly denser fabric, like I feel like you can kind of see through this, which I don't like. This is more solid and just feel like it looks nicer. Um, so yeah, I may possibly cast that on. Um, I may not. We'll see. I'll talk to you about my next dream knitting and show you my next swatches. And then once I have this knit, then I can show you, then I can decide if I want to. So I wanted to use my next limited edition yarn that I have coming into the shop in a project. I looked and looked and looked. I'm quite, I don't know, quite indecisive when it comes to picking projects. Anyway, I find, oh my goodness, a massive spider down there. <laughs> Um, oh, I should try and show you that. It ran away. That's good. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> hope it's eating some slugs or something. Do spiders eat slugs? I don't think they do. Anyway, yes. So this is another, this is my new limited edition yarn. It's not coming out until August. It is a mixture of Hebridean and Black Welsh Mountain, which is totally beautiful. It's wool and spun and it is four ply weight. And I just love all the little flecks of white in through it. It's actually quite soft and very beautiful. And yep, yeah, it was spun in wheels and the fibre is from Bally Castle. Um, and I just love using my local fibres and getting them spun like this and I don't I've only knit it like maybe one thing in my limited edition yarns and I always feel like I want to knit more but I'm always running out of time so I made a point of slightly delaying the launch of this so that I could knit something and just to give myself a bit more time so the pattern that I am going to knit with this is Hive Knits the First Sweater um, I don't have a photo of it here, but it's basically like just like um, mainly stocking it in the body and the sleeves are half rib, I think. And a wee tiny bit of a puff sleeve and um, I think it has a fold it over neck band, but I haven't printed out all the pattern pages yet. And the weight was supposed to be DK. So I was like, okay, this is four ply. I'll double this up and then I'll see where we're at. So I knitted a swatch with it doubled. I think this was on four millimeter needles and it is quite dense, I would say. Um, but it actually works really, really well. If I'd have went up a needle size, if I'd have went to, um, thought I'd seen the spider game. If I'd have went up to a five millimeter needle, this, fabric would be absolutely stunning. Even 4.5, it would be so good. Um, and this is probably working out like an iron weight, I would say. So I would like to do something with it doubled up at some point. And um, maybe not this limited edition, maybe another limited edition. But because it's two ply woolen spun, all the little, like the threads just like meld together really nicely. So this was, the stitch count for the gauge for this was so far off, like it was crazy. I must have such, like I'm a really loose knitter, so I must have had a really different um, gauge to the, gauge to the designer. So I did it with one thread and I went down a few needle sizes because I was still way off. So I had to go down from, is it four or 4.5 to three? ran out of memory on my phone there. I was talking about this watch. So this was on 3.25 millimeter needles and it was the correct gauge. So I'm gonna run with this. I know it's the world's tiniest watch and I should make a bigger one, but um, I really enjoyed my Skill Grassware, um, which is on a similar um, weight to this. It's quite a lightweight um, sweater, the Skill Gra, and um, I wear it all the time so I thought to have another one at a similar gauge um, would be nice. Um, it looks a wee bit see-through there but 
I mean, when it's up, it gives the body, I think it's fine. Um, so yeah, I just really wanted to take this time to slow down and enjoy the limited editions more because I don't do that enough. So that is on my to-do list for the next while. So I've got a nice little pile of swatches. <laughs> do a lot of swatching. Um, and the last thing was I wanted to show you some yarn that's coming in my next update and also wanted to show you the yarn that I dyed with Indigo and Dock, or Dawkins as I call them. Um, so I have some, so yeah, this is going to be, there won't be any more shop updates until August apart from the advent calendar pre-order which will go up next month. Yes, you heard me right. I am doing them. I am crazy. <laughs> it's just a 12 day one and um, I'll maybe do like a little thing on here before I release them just to give you all the information. And it's going to be like a proper advent calendar with like opening windows and everything. So I'm so proud of it. <laughs> it's like custom designed. So anyway, back to the yarn. Um, the yarn that I dyed with Indigo and then over dyed with Doc, I'm going to show you it. I just feel like the colours turned out so nice. So this is like a darker batch of the Indigo. And this one is a lighter one. And aren't the colours amazing? I haven't put the labels on them yet. But these are totally my colours. Um, I think I'll probably just call them like Indigo and Dock or something. And um, this is on my natural sock base. So in this update, there'll be natural sock and hearth sock only. There's going to be, I think, four mini skein sets. Um, obviously, because there's not going to be any more yarn in the shop until August, pretty much. So I need something just to have to make sure I have enough there to keep you all going for a while. So I picked the dog from my neighbor's garden. She was like, yeah, please go in and pick it. So um, I just went in and picked it. I didn't even need that much. The color was much more vibrant than I thought it was going to be. That's actually the first time I dyed with Doc because normally for yellow I just use onion skins which all my family keep for me but this turned out really good so I might start doing more of this. I'm just so proud of these colours so this is coming in the next shop update. Um, I don't have all the colours here but I'm just bringing a few. So this is what it kind of looked like before and this is what it looked like after the over dye. This one is just indigo four. This one's called indigo four. Um, and I'm gonna have some speckles colorways. Um, I made this one before, this is gold dust. And I have Cayman wisteria. And I have bog cotton. This is normally a winter colorway, but I just decided it would be nice to have all the nice speckle colors together. And this is a new one, it's called Neptune. Just thought they looked really nice together. So, yep. And then I brought out a sock set and I, oh, I have this one, I forgot about this one. I have made this for a while, this is Mythology. This is one of my favorites. It just has such a nice blend of colors in there. So this is all my natural sock base. And then the mini skein set and the sock set is on my hearth sock. Well, two, two mini skein sets are on the hearth sock this time and two are on the natural sock, but the ones that are on the natural sock, I haven't finished labeling those or twisting them or anything yet, so I can't really show them to you. Um, but if you look on my Instagram, I might show them, or if you're signed up to my newsletter, I might put them in there. This one has, oh no, this one does. I was gonna name this one Into the Deep Forest because it's all greens. Well, kind of green. This one's not so green, but it kind of works with the greenhouse vibe, doesn't it? Um, and this one is called the High Hills, this sock set. And it's 120 grams and 
397 meters per 120 grams. Normally it's 330 meters per 100 grams. So yeah, my hard sock yarn is a little bit heavier than the natural sock. So I've explained why I create this yarn in previous videos. It's a very long explanation, so I'm not gonna go into it here, but yeah. Good for socks if you're a loose knitter like me, um, but like to get a nice tight gauge, basically. So I think that's everything. Um, I've got a bit more footage coming now of some walks and I think that's everything for today. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again for the summer episode, which will probably be the end of August. So maybe I'll have a few more finished things to show you <laughs> rather than just one. And um, thanks for tuning in again. And I hope you're all doing well. And I hope you all have a lovely summer or winter, depending on where you are in the world. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. See ya.